Hey everybody, Christian from Treasure Town here, and today we've got a bunch of $1 bills that I want to tell you about, because these really are not adding up too much. Every day they seem to spend for less and less, but there are still a few that are worth hundreds of dollars, even though their face value is only one. Now, when I say that, I'm referring to rarer currency errors. That's when at the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, something goes wrong, so maybe they mess up the back or they print something upside down. You never know what it might look like, but I want to tell you exactly how to search for some of these errors. We'll be going through 15 examples of $1 bills that sold for over $100. So let me show you just what I'm talking about in the PowerPoint presentation. And here's going to be the first error we go over, the PCGS 55, so it circulated lightly, missing black Fed Reserve overprint, so that should be right here. Um, it's overprinted along with the serial numbers and the a treasury seal, so it's just missing. I think since it's a star note, there's a little bit of added premium, but ends up selling for $265. So 265 times the initial investment, you could say here's a partial doubling error that sold for 235 bucks. Um, normally, you know, you'd see the second uh, impression here um, doubled all th the way through, and those can be really, really valuable since it's only partial and it doesn't end up looking super attractive. You know, it's not like a full coverage. Uh, I think that there's definitely a little bit less excitement or premium on the note, but still a good one to know about. This one I think is really cool, 600 bucks. Again, we see the missing uh, Fed overprint, but the differences, um, or actually it's right down here, um, it's really misaligned, but the flood pattern, um, there's a huge ink smear on the face, maybe it was towards the end of the group of notes that it was printed with, but whatever, for whatever reason, um, a bunch of extra ink gets pushed all along the front of the note, and it's a pattern, and sort of in a way that I really haven't seen before, it's also sharply cut off um, along that line right there, so just an interesting happening, um, and somebody paid up for it. Right here, we've got a very basic one. It's just a solid star. So over here, we have the normal star note, nothing too crazy. But then this one, the star is filled in and that's not supposed to happen. So somebody paid $310 for it. I think it's a really cool one because it's pretty conceivable that it could happen. Um, you know, probably just a little bit of over inking going on, but it's retained within the star um, or for whatever reason ends up being a cool error note. Um, after that, we've got a printed fold. So slight fold as the note is being produced. Um, looks like the note has an interesting effect where often it would just not show up, but instead the fold is along sort of a horizontal manner and you see the obverse impression, half of that sort of, less than half of it, but on the reverse and then nothing uh, on the front, but somebody, this is towards the upper range of our 100 to to $1,000 limit, $840, and that circulated for a while. I think that that's interesting. You can see the folds in it. People really didn't pay too much attention, um, but had it been folded back, you know, maybe nobody really noticed. Um, that's why you should be looking at your change closely. Uh, here we've got a cutting error, so this is not an error where it's like a misaligned uh, print or something like that or an inverted back that can often have a similar effect but instead it's just a miscut note where it's clearly off center um, probably a fair amount of miscut notes made here and this one gets out of the uh, bureau of engraving and printing 490 dollars um, nice mid mid-range note uh, here there's a board break which um, occurs when the impression cylinder gets is you know partially faulty so when it pulls the note out onto the intaglio it doesn't fully work $275 for this one looks like somewhat of like a misaligned or a uh, like missing ink error but this one happens to be a board break which is a little bit uh, rarer though a fully missing print is something that is quite scarce um, I think it's often a little bit more valuable if the front is missing the print, but in this case, the back, you know, this one, I've seen circulated examples where it's a missing print where nobody's thought to flip the note over, but here there's just simply no um, print on the reverse or on the back, $470 for this one. Um, there's also the additional obverse printing. This is what I was talking about before, um, where it's a little more attractive if it looks like it's fully been doubled. Um, so, you know, fully, fully doubled all the way through the overprint. Uh, is not doubled, obviously, because it's just the main body of this note that ends up having that effect, but 760 bucks, and 
uh, you know, a really nice return for the person who this, you know, again, 35 means that circulated. You can see some of the folds or the bends, and that's pretty interesting. So anyways, here we've got the missing ink. Uh, 17 consecutive notes sold for 720 altogether. So maybe a little bit less impressive, but I just thought that was really cool because you can see how the missing ink um, starts, you know, slightly missing and then gets a lot more missing as things goes on. Uh, and you can just see sort of the full history of what was going on at the printing presses. Uh, really cool. I bet that that would sell for more today. Um, right here, we've got a test note. Again, this one seems to have circulated somehow. I find that hard to believe, but uh, again, people probably just did not flip it over. Uh, they're inking, you know, their test if there's enough ink to make notes. Certainly was in this case, but uh, what results is that just a huge amount of that uh, ink. It's like massively overinked on the entire side that they test. Uh, this one sold for $780. Um, then we've got this fold over error where, you know, you have presumably the uh, unfolded after the first printing, which would put together, you know, that's why we see uh, the Federal Reserve note, everything, you know, that's not in the overprint, and then it unfolds by the time they put the overprint on, you can see the serial number on both sides as well as the Fed seal. So $780 again. Um, this one, 325 interesting because it's a multiple first impression. So similar to the other note that we had, except uh, maybe there was a fold in it or something, but somehow only 50% of the note has that effect. And, you know, I just find that that's cool. You know, that's why this mid range of a hundred to a thousand errors, often the errors are not like super drastic, but they're really neat and pretty findable. You know, this one clearly circulated as well. Um, so maybe the fold was afterward, but uh, grades of 40. So that means that definitely did see some time just in somebody's hands. 325 bucks here, a $705 paper splice. I think you can see it a little bit, I want to say, in the bottom. Basically, uh, the paper should have been cut off here, but um, was not detached. And this note gets out of the mint, 705 bucks. After that, we've got the multiple impression error here. This is really cool because it's offset, you know, it's like... Uh, at a 45 degree angle or maybe 30 degrees, but this has the, let's see, that's the obverse on this uh, sort of inverted. I believe that this means that the obverse ink would have come down onto the reverse one um, and then gotten the reverse impression uh, again, sort of like a, maybe the inverse of like a broad struck coin. I'm not as knowledgeable about the error process with these notes, but um, I believe that basically the front ink got transferred onto something that then put it on the back. So that was 840. Here we've got an inverted back. I'd referenced this earlier. It's when the sh sheets of paper are fed the wrong way uh, into after their um, initial press. And this one is also a little bit misaligned here. So this one ends up being $705. Uh, nice uncirculated note, but was caught pretty early on. And then lastly, we've got a classic mismatch serial numbers. This one's only 285 bucks, but really, really worn. Um, you know, nobody noticed it. Two on that side, zero on this one. And that's always something that you can look for on literally any paper currency, because as you can see, uh, you know, there's not always eyes searching for this stuff. So really nice group of different notes that we were able to go over. Um, not the craziest or the most expensive, but still really good to know about. Thanks for watching the video. I'd encourage you to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel to stay updated. I've also got Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, so you can follow me there. Um, TreasureTownYT.com is the main channel website. Definitely give that a visit. I've got a lot of information about me up there and the channel. Uh, CoinGrabBag.com as well currently redirects there, but it's some good opportunities for very fair grab bags, both made by me and other sellers. A lot of different options, so that's a good way to support. Um, there's also TreasureTownCoins.com. In the future, my coin dealing uh, operation will be done out of that website. Uh, CoinMeltPrice.com for updates on the melt prices of your coins, both U.S. and world world, a lot of resources in that website, and then coinsmetalscards.com being developed right now as a marketplace and news source for coins, metals, cards, and collectibles in general. So I'll see you on my future videos. Looking forward to seeing you there and hope you have a good day.